What is good YouTube and welcome back to a brand new video. We're back here today on NBA 2K24 here for another rebuild. As we know, they three team trade that went down. Damian Lord has been sent to the Milwaukee Bucks. We already did the Bucks side of things. We've already done the Sun side of things today. We're going to jump in and do the Portland Trailblazers side of things doing a post Damian Lord trade. Portland Trailblazers rebuild. Before we get in today's video, make sure you guys drop a like on this one and subscribe if you are new to this channel. As always, greatly appreciate. Now, originally, I was gonna wait to see what the Blazers get for Drew Holiday uh, to do this rebuild, but I don't know how long it's gonna take. So uh, I feel like it's probably best that I just come out here and do it because I'm excited to do this rebuild. But with the Drew Holiday thing, it's kind of incomplete. But I went ahead and just kind of did my own spin on what maybe a Drew Holiday trade could look like. It sounds like he's gonna go for quite a bit. Who really knows? We're not going to know until it actually happens. So let's just go ahead and start with that. As I said, we've done the Bucks, We've done the Suns. I waited to do, Bla do the Blazers. I want to see if Drew Holiday would get traded yesterday or the other day. Hasn't happened yet. Maybe he gets traded today. Who knows? But this is the trade that I did for Drew Holiday. I think there's a lot of contending teams lining up for him. Philadelphia, Boston, Clippers. A lot of different teams that could land him. Here's the trade that I did. And uh, just bear with me. If you don't agree with the trade, that's totally fine. You don't have to, you know, rage at me in the comment section below. I don't truly know what the holiday trade is going to look like when it does happen. But here's what I did. So, Drew Holiday is headed to the Boston Celtics. I just feel like that's such a good replacement to Marcus Smart. A lot better than Marcus Smart on the offensive end. Defensively, they're both really good. Malcolm Brogdon is headed to the Clippers. They originally traded for Malcolm Brogdon uh, when the offseason first started. Of course, they backed out of the trade. So, I mean, they could still be interested in him, and he heads to the Clippers. Robert Williams is in the trade because the Celtics have to make up money to match Drew Holiday's salary. So, the either either they do this. They either trade Brogdon, or they either... So, they're going to have to trade Brogdon, right? They're either going to have to trade Robert Williams or Al Horford. I feel like they would rather keep Al Horford just for their contender status because, uh, you know, Al Horford obviously has been really good for them, and Robert Williams has health issues. I know it sounds crazy for the Celtics to trade him away, but... I could see a world where they would do that rather than trading Al Horford away. Uh, so we also get a first round pick from the Celtics. And then Marcus Morris and Robert Covington are also headed to Portland for salary filler. And we get a first round pick from, the, from them as well. So basically for Drew Holiday, we net Robert Williams and two first round picks. Could it be worth more? Could Drew Holiday be worth more? Absolutely. Could he be worth less? Absolutely. I don't actually know what he's going to go for. But with that all being said, this is what we got now. Robert Williams is now a Portland Trailblazer. So now we have two centers that we could probably have fight over the starting center position, which I think is a lot of fun. Is this trade going to actually happen? Like I said, probably not. It was just kind of my spin on what I could potentially see happening. We'll see if it does or not. Uh, it sounds like Drew Holiday might be going to the Clippers out of all things, but we shall see. So let's go take a look at the lineup now that that trade is done. So we have Scoot. Sharp, Dybul, Covington, Robert Williams, DeAndre Aiden, or sorry, Simon's DeAndre Aiden. They want to start Robert Williams over Aiden, Jeremy Grant, Marcus Morris, Moses Brown. So obviously up top, I want to fix some things. Says, I already know I do not want to start uh, Robert Covington. I don't want to start Robert Williams. So what I need to do is fix Chauncey's system first and foremost. That's going to fix it all. So obviously his preferred system is always on defense. So we're going to move this perimeter centric and that should fix some things. I'm also going to move uh, Shaden Sharp to the three i want shaden sharp to start this year with scoot and anthony simons i'm going to develop those three out of all of them there's no three there's no reason not have all the three of these guys playing heavy minutes so scoot simon sharp jeremy grant deandre and i like it with a bench of rob williams matisse Thibel, marcus morris i guess for now robert covington and moses brown so i'm also going to shrink this down to an rotation, and i want to go ahead and kick out uh robert covington first and foremost i want to give chris murray these minutes and then we're going to kick out Marcus Morris for Jabari Walker. I don't see the point of having Morris or Covington, honestly, playing minutes here. We're rebuilding. We're not really looking to win anything this year. The I think the Blazers in real life might be looking to win this year, just based off how the roster is kind of structured. I can see a world where they're still trying to be competitive. Uh, but I also want to go ahead and send a couple guys to the G League. So we're going to send Ryan Repair down to the G League, and then we're also going to send uh, Tamari Kamara to the G League as well. And I think that's going to be it. So... I'll see you guys at the end of year one. Obviously, no expectations going into the season. I kind of just want to see how things go. As far as shot tendencies are concerned, I do want to fix these a little bit. Anthony Simons is easily going to be the number one option on the Blazers now. Jeremy Grant's probably going to be like the second option, I imagine. Aiden, I obviously want him to do as good as he possibly can. Sharp, I want to be good as well. So we're going to push him to like a 72. And I think that's going to be it. So I will see you guys at the end of year one. I don't plan on stopping at the trade deadline. Obviously, I could trade like Morris and Covington, but... I don't really know what they'd even get me. I don't think they're going to go for that much. So I'm not going to waste my time. So I'll see you guys at the end of year one. 
Today's video is brought to you by Prize Picks. Prize Picks is a player prop site that allows you to choose the overs or unders on the players you love watching. So basically, you just watch a game like normal and also make some picks and choose the overs or unders on the players, like I said, that you like watching. So of course, Prize Picks is available on mobile or desktop. And this is what it looks like when you get on the screen. They pretty much have every sport you can imagine. Obviously, we're still waiting on NBA. But right now, the NFL is going on. They have all kinds of stats you can imagine as well. You choose between two to six players. Two players is five times. Up to six players can be 25 times your money. Prize Picks also matches your first deposit dollar for dollar up to $100. In order to sign up for Prize Picks, link is down in the description below. Use code CRUSHABLES to sign up. And a tool I'm using this year is DGF's Fantasy Optimizer Tool and Correlation Tool. Basically, they do the math for you. You don't even really have to think about anything. All you have to do is just look at the interface. They'll have some picks for you, and you can go ahead and choose which ones are your favorite, choose the top ones, whatever you want to do. They do the math for you. They show you what's profitable long-term. So in order to sign up uh, for the DGF's Correlation Optimizer Tool, link down in the description below. Use code CRUSHBOS when you sign up. Thank you to Prize Picks and DGF for sponsoring today's video. So at the end of year one, Giannis wins MVP, Vic Rookie of the Year, Chris Paul sixth man, Giannis Vincent Player, and Paul Reed most improved, and Trey Young Clutch Player of the Year, and Nick Nurse is your Coach of the Year. So uh, you got Dame, you got Giannis, Jokic, John Morant. Uh, I'm sure we don't have anybody representing us. Uh, as far as all rookie teams are concerned, we do have uh, Scoo Henderson making it, which is great, and here's your all rookie second team. So obviously, we're not in the playoffs. This was not our year. I mean, I technically could see this Portland team maybe being a play-in team, but we were not. Yeah, 23 from Simons. You had 20 from Jeremy Grant, 19 from Scoot, 15 from Aiden, and 15 from Shannon Sharp. Now, part of me wanted to trade uh, Jeremy Grant the trade deadline, but I decided to just go ahead and summon the rest of the season. I'll trade him this offseason if I can get something for him. So let's go ahead and some of these playoffs, and let's see who goes out here and wins a championship. So we're going to have... The Miami Heat still beat the Bucks, so who needs Damian Lillard in Miami? And then you got Philly and Warriors, and you're going to have the Warriors go on to beat them in six games. So here's where it all starts for us. Obviously, the lottery is going to be a very important step this offseason. We are projected the eighth overall picks. We have the eighth best odds of jumping up to number one. Let's see if we get lucky here, and we are going to stay at number nine. So actually, we fell one spot. Sacramento gets number one, which is pretty crazy. We get number nine, so I guess we can go ahead and add somebody to the team at the ninth overall pick. Sucks that we couldn't be higher than that, but it is what it is. But let's go ahead, fill out this coaching staff, and I'll see you guys with most likely a Jeremy Grant, Jeremy Grant trade next to go ahead and free up some minutes from some of our other younger players. First thing I'm going to do is send Matisse Thibel over to the Lakers for three second round picks. So Thibel goes over to the Los Angeles Lakers. We get rid of him, free up more minutes for some of the other younger players. And again, the next is going to be Jeremy Grant. I have a German Grant trade idea after the draft. Let's go ahead and see how this draft goes. So Buzelis goes to Sacramento. San Antonio is going to go to Adam. Uh, so they get Vic and Adam as well. Ron Holland goes to Detroit. We got Donovan Klingon go to Orlando. We're going to have DJ Weiner going to Indiana. Uh, Cody Williams goes to Houston. We got Riley Kugel goes to Charlotte. Oklahoma City is going to take Justin Edwards. That would have been my pick. But we have Alex Sar still on the board, and uh, we do have Robert Williams, DeAndre Aiden right now, so I'm not really sure if he makes all the sense in the world for us. We have Collier as well, but we don't really need guards. Kobe Walter, Stephen Castleton. Uh, we have Isaiah. I don't even know how to say that last name, so we could take him. We do need a power forward. Two-way inside the arc score, just average 24 and 11. Uh, I think we're going to go ahead and take him. I do like Alex Sar, but since we have Aiden and uh, Robert Williams, I don't know if it makes a ton of sense to take him, so... We're going to go ahead and take this power forward out of Spain. I don't know much about him, so hopefully he's pretty good. But we got Clintman in the second round. Mac, I'm going to take Clintman here. And then we're also going to go ahead and take uh, Tristan De Selva, Cody Hawkins. I think I'll take... I mean, at this point, it doesn't really matter too much who we're getting. So I'll just take like Cole Hawkins. I'll just let the CPU take care of the rest. So we got Buzielis going to Sacramento. So our pick ended up being a 75 overall. Not too bad. Uh, obviously not the best, but not too shabby. Alex Sar would have been great. He goes to Dallas with Alex Sar and uh, Derek Lively now in Dallas. Interesting. Uh, but as far as uh, rookie signings are concerned, we got Isaiah. I'm also going to sign Bobby Clintman, Hawkins, and Aiden Mahoney. I'm not going to worry about. So, uh, Shane Sharp, of course, we're going to accept that option. Qualifying offers, Ibu Baji and John Butler. Not too worried about them very much. And then free agency, we have Marcus Morris Covington, who we're not bringing back, obviously. And then we do have some cash space to go out there, or an MLE, I should say, to sign someone. But don't know if I'll really be in that market. So, the only other thing I want to do is I want to trade away Jeremy Grant. That way we can go ahead and start our new prospect here in Isaiah Almanza. I don't even know if that's how you say it. Most likely not. But let's go ahead and uh, do that Jeremy Grant trade that I thought I had lined up. I want to see if I could trade him to Dallas for expiring contracts and a first round pick. I think Jeremy Grant and Dallas would make a ton of sense. They're going to want first round pick and they'll give me Prosper. 
No, thank you. I will also throw you. Um, I mean, I could also throw you. I mean, I don't really. There's nothing I really want to give to you, to be honest with you. Uh, Jabari Walker would be like the one thing I'd throw in here, and they still want my first round pick from LA. I'm not doing that. So we'll have to move on to a different team. The Thunder were offering me a first round pick and Isaiah Joe. So I think we're going to go ahead and do this trade. I could see the Oklahoma City Thunder wanting to be competitive. Maybe they bring Jeremy Grant back to Oklahoma City. So we're going to do that trade. We get a first round pick for Jeremy Grant. That's all I can really dream of. That's what I wanted. So now, rotationally, we have Scoo Henderson. We have Anthony Simons and Isaiah Joe. We have Shaden Sharp. We have Isaiah. We have Chris Murray, Bobby Clintman, Jabari Walker, and then Kamara down there. We have DeAndre and Robert Williams. So. We're going to move Ryan Repair down to the three as well. I think he'll even go up. He does. He's up to a 72 overall. So we have that going for us. Uh, so right now, the only thing we could really use is a backup point guard. Other than that, I'm cool with, you know, I'm cool with just kind of sucking again next year. So uh, Isaiah, if you want to start the four this year, that's fine with me. And obviously we could maybe be in the sweepstakes for Cooper flag as well, which is kind of what we want to do. Uh, so as far as backup point guards who we can sign, we can sign like Lonzo ball, but I'm not trying to do anything like that, obviously. Uh, so I just get like a young point guard, like a Jalen Noel off the bench or uh, a Trey Mann off the bench. I think I'm cool with that. So we're going to sign Trey Mann, only one year deal. I think I'm cool on that. So we're going to go Trey Mann to be our backup point guard. I'm not looking to win any uh, next year anyway. So that is fine with me. The only other thing I want to do, though, is I want to fix secondary positions because I have moved some guys around. So DeAndre Aiden, he's fine there. Uh, Bobby Clintman, that's fine. Chris Murray, that's fine. Uh, Ryan Repair. He's 6'6", so shooting guard, small forward, Shane Sharp, same thing. Shooting guard, small four, not center. And then I think that's it. So, yeah, we're good on that. So, let's go straight to player progression. I'm curious to see how much Scoot goes up, how much Simons goes up, how much Aiden goes up. So, obviously, it's going to be a really good moment of truth. Baji's back on his uh, two-way offer. That's great. So, Aiden's up to an 87. That's awesome. Simons up to an 85. Shane Sharp up to an 83. Scoot up to an 82. Trey Mann's even up to a 78. Isaiah Joe, Chris Murray, Ryan Repair is up to a 74. So, yeah, this is looking really good. The progressions is exactly what we want it to be. I can see a world where this team is a playing team next year. Uh, the player progression looked really good for us. We have a lot of good players. We are able to free up more minutes for some of the other, other young guys as well. No more Jeremy Grant. No more Matisse Thibel. So we got those guys gone. So I'm feeling really good about what this team could potentially look like next year and what we could potentially do. So let's go ahead and load this draft class. Obviously, the main thing we want to try to do, if we're not going to be a... Uh, playing team if we could tank again and get cooper flag that's obviously a dream scenario so let's go anderson every simon shade and sharp chris murray so they want to start chris murray i'm not opposed to it that's fine deandre and rob williams trey man isaiah joe and then isaiah so if isaiah has to earn his spot i'm also going to go 10 minute rotation to give ryan repair some minutes as well uh but other than that we should be golden i'm going to send bobby clintman down to the g league he's not even getting minutes anyway so he might oh not free agency let's send him to the g league so he might even be our starting power forward next year. Who knows? But I will see you guys at the trade deadline. Or no, at the end of the season. I don't think I'll stop at the trade deadline. I really like my team right now. Feeling good about it. Obviously, the power forward spot could use an upgrade. If we're tanking really badly, hopefully we can get Cooper Flag. If not, we'll just kind of see. Maybe if we do stop at the deadline, I'll show you. But I don't plan on it. So at the end of year two, John Morant wins MVP. Collier is your rookie of the year. Bones Highland, sixth man, AD defensive player. And Kate Cunningham, most improved. AD also clutch player of the year. And Bickerstaff, coach of the year. And Brandon Harrison, executive. So here's your NBA first team, NBA second team. I can't imagine we have any Blazers here, but that would have been really cool if we did. But unfortunately, we do not. Do we do? Do we get an all-rookie uh, first team with our... No, we do not. Uh, he does make all-rookie second team, though. So he averaged... Let's see. I guess we could take a look at it in a second. But he averaged eight points per game. Not too shabby. I think he played off the bench. So Alex Sar in Dallas did his thing with four and six. We could have drafted him. Maybe I should have. Who knows? But we are the third seed in the West. I did not expect to be this good that soon. But I guess I'm not too surprised. Obviously, 2K loves young rosters. And the progression was really on our side. Uh, but Simon's led the way with 23. Uh, Shane Sharp with 19. 18 from Scoop. 18 and 11 from DeAndre 12 from Trey Mann. He was actually a really good addition to this team as well. Uh, 10 from Isaiah Joe, 8 from Isaiah, and then 6 from Robert Williams, and then 5.5 from Chris Murray. So here's what your rotation is looking like going into the playoffs. I'm excited to see how we do. I'm hoping we can uh, maybe get to round two. That'd be pretty cool. So we get Denver, who obviously just won the championship not too long ago. They have Christian Wood, Isaiah Collier now, Christian Brown, Zeke Naji. So a very good team in Denver. I don't know if we're ready to beat them, but here we go. Somebody current round against Denver. And we're going to go up 3-0 to zero on them and beat them in five. So, wow, just like that, we take care of business. And maybe, just maybe, we're a lot better than I thought we were. But we get uh, Oklahoma City in round two. Obviously, we gave them Jeremy Grant. So, he's in Oklahoma City now. 
This should be a fun little matchup. Shea, Giddy, Lou Dort, Jalen Williams, Chet. Here we go. I'm not expecting to beat them, but if we do, I'd be a very happy man to make it to the Western Conference Finals in year number two, and we are going to get swept. Okay, that's fine. I think we have more work to do anyway. So we're going to have uh, the Thunder and the Cavs in the finals, and we're going to have the Cavaliers go on to beat the Oklahoma City Thunder. So I'm totally cool with it. LeBron James retires a Clipper. Draft lottery time. Now that we made the playoffs, our pick will convey to the, uh, to, to the Chicago Bulls. So they get the 26 pick via us. So obviously we don't have our pick. I don't know if we have any picks in this draft. I don't think so. I think it's not until next year's draft, unfortunately. So uh, no Cooper flag for us, which kind of sucks. But staff signing, Chauncey Billups. I mean, we just made the playoffs with them. So no reason to go in and fire him. Got to round two. Did get swept by the Thunder. But I mean, the fact that we even got as far as we did, I think is an accomplishment in itself. So I'm not too concerned about it. So... The one thing I know that I have a problem with in the future is Robert Williams and DeAndre are both going to be uh, free agents next year. So is Anthony Simons, I believe. So that's a lot of money we have to spend. So I wouldn't mind consolidating one or two of those contracts to try. Can I get a guard guru somewhere, by the way? Like I haven't seen a single one. There we go. So I wouldn't mind, uh, you know, consolidating two of those contracts potentially for like a big trade. Now, where does that big trade come from? I'm not totally sure at the moment, but I do kind of want to look around the league and see if uh there's any buddy that i can get to add to this team to make us like an over-the-top contender i don't know if that exists but we are going to look around through the trade market to be honest with you i don't think it exists it really doesn't i don't really see anything that made a ton of sense we're gonna accept all these team options so thankfully we don't have to pay sharp yet actually sharp scoot or not scoot sharp simon's and then also Aiden and Robert Williams will all be free agents next year. So that is definitely something we have to consider when we're going into uh, spending money soon. So uh, do we have money for Giannis? We almost do. I'm not going to sign Giannis or anything, but it would be cool. Evan Mobley, of course, that would be a dream scenario if we can get him in Portland. Uh, I would love that. Nothing more than nothing more than to get Robert or get Evan Mobley in Portland. That'd be awesome. But the one position of weakness we have right now is obviously is our uh, power forward spot. It just isn't uh up to par right now with the rest of our roster so obviously the main thing i saw was evan mobley i'm gonna throw him an offer the likelihood of me getting him very unlikely obviously but we'll throw him one anyway uh Kawhi leonard not going for him jimmy jason tatum obviously would be amazing but he's asked for a little too much money scotty barnes ingram uh randall giddy chris middleton aaron gordon franz wagner i mean franz wagner uh when i did a magic rebuild he hardly developed which was really disappointing we could sound like Patrick Williams or Trey Murphy, but I don't really know if that does anything for us. So maybe we don't get two. Ooh, Kamenga also I like the idea of. Jonathan Kamenga, he does progress really well in 2K. Uh, he hasn't hit the stride yet, but he just averaged 17 and shot 39% from three. I could see a world where Kamenga could make some sense. I think we're going to throw Kamenga an offer. We're going to have to overpay him because if you're Portland, you have to overpay guys anyway. So we're going to pay him a lot of money. And, uh, you know, I might regret this because obviously how much money we're going to spend next off season, but if we can win a championship next year. We won't even have to worry about that. So let's see if Kuminga, Evan Mobley, of, of course, agrees, but I'm not getting Evan Mobley. So they match Kuminga. The Warriors do not match. So we get Jonathan Kuminga as our brand new power forward, which I absolutely love. Okay. So we got him. I would love to get Trey Mann back as well. If I can, I doubt it, but I would love to try. I don't think I can get him back. So Trey, man, uh, he's probably asked for a little too much money now. I don't know where he was. There he was. So $13 million. Oh, we could still get him. I'm going to sign Trey Mann back as well. We can get Trey Mann. Isaiah Joe, we're probably losing, unfortunately. But getting Trey Mann felt really good. So I like that. Uh, we can get Isaiah Joe back as well. We're signing both of them. We're keeping the continuity here. Jabari Walker, I, he must be restricted, right? Is he? Yes, he is. I'm going to sign him back as well. So the roster is the same other than the fact we've added Kaminga to the fold as well. So Kaminga adds to the roster. Aiden and Robert Williams, both free agents next year. Anthony Simons, a free agent next year as well. So um, we're going to be really good at the trade deadline for me not to make a move. I'm going to be honest with you. I'm hoping Kamenga jumps up like crazy because that would be amazing if he does. Ibu Baji. So we have Sharp up to an 88. Scoot up to an 86. Aiden's still an 87. Simons. Kamenga's up to an 83. So I feel justified by paying him. Robert Williams is an 83. Simons, 86. And then Trey Mann. Uh, Isaiah is also up to a 78. So uh, Isaiah Joe is up to a 78. So this is looking really good. I have a good feeling that we may, just maybe, might be a contender next year, which is something I didn't really foresee happening this soon. But when you have Aiden and all this progression around him, I'm not too surprised by that. 
but it is really cool that we could honestly be a contender next year especially after adding John the Kamenga, which I absolutely love. So let's go take a look at a rotation going into next season. Once I load this draft class, I just love the wrong one. I'll fix that in a second, but um, actually let me do it now before I forget. So under Chauncey, we are four and a half system fit under perimeter centric, which is phenomenal. This is what the rotation is looking like. It's Scoot, Anthony, Shaden Sharp, Kamenga, DeAndre, Robert Williams, Trey Mann, Isaiah, Isaiah Joe and then Ryan repair. I mean, this team is phenomenal on paper. It's so good. I'm hoping things go very well for us this year. We'll see how things go. I know I have some financial decisions to make. Am I going to trade Anthony Simons? Am I going to trade Robert Williams? Am I going to trade Aiden? I think I want to keep Aiden for sure. I think I have to decide between Anthony or Robert Williams, or if we're too good and I think we might just win a championship this year. I don't have to worry about it next year. Then maybe I won't even, I don't know. We'll see. I will see you guys at the trade deadline potentially or at the end of year three so year three comes to an end and we end up being uh the sexy in the west so i didn't make any moves at the trade deadline i feel like it uh, feels a lot better to just go for it and worry about the rest later because if i blew it up with the debt not blow it up necessarily but if i traded one of the guys that are kind of contributing to our record right now and i kind of just didn't keep it going into the playoffs i feel like i would have done myself a disservice i guess by not giving myself a chance to win a championship there's gonna be a lot of financial repercussions in the offseason if we don't win the championship but it's a risk i'm willing to take there's so many good players in this roster right now i wanted to keep the continuity together and just go for it so diamond rotation scoot simon shane sharp kamenga aiden robert williams terrence or sorry trey man isaiah and isaiah joe so hoping for the best here Let's see. We get Minnesota in round one. So Minnesota's got Fred Van Vliet, Anthony Edwards, McDaniels, Leonard Miller, Rudy Gobert. Castleton is Cat hurt or, they, or he is hurt. So how long is Carly Towns out? Because that's huge. He is out day to day. So he should be back soon. But if we can win like game one, game two with him gone, that'd be a huge advantage. So game one, of course, we don't win. Why would we win when Cat is out? That, that doesn't make any sense. But let's not drop both games at home please because uh, i would love not to worry about re-signing anybody and we just win a championship here and right off in the sunset so we are going to blow them out in game two that's a great sign shannon sharp does get hurt which is great which isn't great uh left hairline fracture one or two weeks that's not ideal but we're up two to one we got three to one scoot is day to day he's fully back three to one can we beat them in five yes we can we're on to the second round again and now we get memphis so memphis has jaw uh, Ryder Pair is starting at the three right now. They have Jaw, Desmond, Kawhi. Wow, they got Kawhi on this team. Holy moly, what a squad. Right? Or sorry, Jaw Morant, Desmond Bain, Kawhi, Jaron Jackson, Capella with Marcus Smart, Jake LaRavia, Ruben, and Josh Richardson, and Torian Prince. What a squad that Memphis has assembled here. How much is Kawhi making? How much is Capella making? $50 million. You're telling me Kawhi went to Memphis for $15 million and Capella is making $5 million. <laughs> okay. Wow. Um, I was about to say, how on earth are they affording all this? But uh, Mark Smart is still on. Yeah. Wow. Uh, we got our work cut out for us. I will say that. I don't know if Sharp is back. He is back, but he's still kind of hurt. So we'll see. It's going to be a tough one, man. Game one. Sharp is fully back. We're up 1-0. 145 to 110. 34 from uh, Scoot. 26 from Shane Sharp. 22 for Kamenga. Game two. 2-0. As I told you guys, 2K loves their younger roster. Despite what Memphis is looking like, we beat them in five, maybe? Do we do it? Yes. Wow. Okay. Memphis looks like a squad, by the way, bro. I don't know. If that's what their team was in real life, that would be scary. That's all I got to say. Uh, but two, uh, as I told you, 2K loves their younger roster. So, wow. Look at this one. Luca, Hardy, Chris Middleton, Jason Tatum, Alex Sar, Grant Williams, McDaniels, Derek Lively, and Jericho Sims. That is absolutely insane. Tatum and Luca is different, bro. That is different. Tatum signed for $52 million. Middleton, $2 million. Alex Starr, of course, on a rookie contract. Jaden Hardy. Wow. Uh, well, they don't have Kyrie Irving anymore, obviously. It'd be funny if they had Kyrie still as well. I'd been like, just absolutely just... This is, this is going to be a tough one, man. Game one, 1-0 one start, 131 to 121. I still think we have a really good roster, but Tatum and, uh, and Luka is scary for sure. Game two, so far, we're up 2-0. to zero. Both took both games in Dallas. Are we really about to sweep this team? No, I was about to say, there's no way, right? Yeah, they're about to come back. They're about to come back. I was about to say, 2K is pulling my chain right now, but I'm not going to get 3-0 comeback on. I'm not doing it. So 
Let's see if we can win this game six and not get the real comeback because that would be phenomenal if we could do just that. I think we did it. We are going to win game six. We're in the NBA Finals. Wow. Cleveland or Orlando? We get Cleveland. So Cleveland, or wait. Wait, look, okay. So Luca still won the conference. I was about to say, how on earth is Luca winning it? But I forgot they give it to the loser sometimes. So Luca wins conference finals MVP. Okay, that's interesting. All right. Um, one last look at the stats, uh, playoff stats. So we have uh, Scoot leading the way, Simon Sway 2, 19, Isaiah's hurt at the moment. He's day to day. All right. Cleveland, do they have Mitchell anymore? They do not even have Donovan Mitchell anymore, unless if he's hurt, which he could be. No, he's not on the team anymore. So I think we beat this team. We have Edmund Sumner as they're starting two. Game one, Isaiah's back. We're up one to zero. Game two, two to zero. Game three, three to zero. And just like that, season number three, we win a championship. Scoot Henderson is your MVP in the conference or in the NBA Finals. Love to see it. Finals MVP. Man, what a roster this was. And thankfully, I don't have to worry about reciting anybody. We can end it off on that note because I would have told you if we if we lost, the financial repercussions this offseason would have been insane. We would have had to resign Sharp. Uh, Simon, or sorry, not Simons next year. Or yeah, Simons, Aiden, and Robert Williams. That would have been really tough to keep everybody together. I don't even have to worry about that. Hope you guys enjoyed today's video. Uh, obviously, I'll have to do an updated one when the drill trade actually happens. I just don't know when it's going to happen. Knowing my luck, I'm going to upload this, and it's going to happen right after. So yeah, thank you guys for watching. As always, this is Crushables. I'm saying peace. Thank you guys so much for watching. Make sure you click here to watch another video that I know you'll love.